Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing another movie review this week, and this time it's a Disney and Pixar superhero action adventure called The Incredibles 2. The long-awaited sequel to the original The Incredibles from 2004, which features the Parr family, Bob and Helen, also known as Mr. Incredible, and Elastigirl, with their kids, Violet, Dash and baby Jack Jack. <laughs> they also team up along with um, Lucius Bess, known as Frozone, to stop all the villains uh, from taking over in Metroville. And I really enjoy the original Incredibles when it came out. And this was at the time when <laughs> I was already still my, I believe, my second or third year of, of college. And I was really excited for this because this was a, a new movie for, for Pixar. But this time it focuses on you know, superheroes who just want to have fun and save the world, you know, busting out some bad guys and everything, which leads to what's going on. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just amazing. It has a great story and really shows. And also, all, all the suits that they designed, of course, were done by you know, fashion designer Edna Mode. <laughs> yeah. Um, such a fun movie. But the sequel is even better than ever. And it's a big surprise, too, because after waiting 14 years to to see this. I was very excited and had a wonderful time um, seeing in the theaters. Um, but this time it goes to a whole different level because they're now trying to go after a new villain, a mysterious villain, which actually causes um, a lot of hypnotic images that are happening. Which, by the way, uh, they Disney actually sent out a note um, to all the feeders out there just to let them know that from the Epilepsy uh, Foundation, for those who have uh, epileptic seizures, especially the ones who are photosensitive over it, there are scenes in the movie where you're going to end up feeling very epileptic. So. So sometimes it can be hard to handle with all these flashy images around. Yeah. And so they just give them a note for, for those who have seen the movie. And for those who are sensitive over it. Yeah, and I know because really, really is no laughing matter to, to deal with. Because that's been going on. But on top of that, um, there's no stopping to see this movie because it's definitely worth seeing it, especially on the big screen. Yeah. Well, anyway, l let's get to the sequel. It stars Craig T. Nelson, been best known for the TV show Coach, but he was also in, in the movies uh, Poltergeist along with the sequel. He was also in Turner and Hooch, you know, as well as Action Jackson, and so on and so forth. Holly Hunter from the movie Broadcast News, as well as uh, Home for the Holidays and many others, also was in a TV series called. She was in a TV series called Saving Grace. Uh, that was on TNT a long time ago. And Sarah Bow, Huck uh, Miner, Eli Fusile, Samuel Jackson. As we all know, <laughs> been in Pulp Fiction, uh, National Lampoon's uh, Little Weapon One, and the, the Avengers, many other films he's been in. <laughs> of course, uh, Bob Oakenkirk, Catherine Keener, with Brad Bird, of course, because he's also the writer and director. Jonathan Banks. Michael Bird, uh, Sophia Bush, 
Yeah, from that team show on the WB called One Tree Hill. I never watched that, but I know she's been in other stuff. Phil Lamar. Yeah, best known from as a cast member from Mad TV, but he's been on other stuff too. He went on to do uh, the voice of Samurai Jack. Isabel Wesselini from the movie Blue Velvet and White Knights. Also, Death Becomes Her and many others. And Bill Weiss, Barry Boswick here yeah, from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And John Wassenberger from Cheers, but has been in various uh, Pixar movies ever since uh, Toy Story. <laughs> and it's written and directed by Brad Bird, who, of course, not only uh, did The Iron Giant, but he also had done the original movie as well. And as well as uh, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. There we go. The movie began set three months later after they defeated the villain Syndrome from the first movie. The Parr family, Bob Helen, Dash, Violet, and Jack Jack, had continued to operate under the superhero identity known as the Incredibles with the help of Bob's best friend Lucius Bess, aka Frozone, to stop a villain named the Underminer from Robbie Banks in Metroville by using his drilling machine and it causes a lot of damage throughout the entire city and they actually failed to, to go after the underminer and because of that they considered the superheroes to be totally illegal throughout the entire city and Rick Dicker informs the Park family that the super relocation department program is being shut down they're being sent to a local motel for two weeks in advance. Uh, that is until Lucius Best had came over to be contacted by a superhero fan, but he's also a telecommunications uh, tycoon known as uh, Woodson Debor, who owns um, DebTech, which he, along with his sister, Evelyn, who's a genius inventor behind Devic's technology, had offered to propose a publicity stunt to regain the public's support and trust in superheroes. So that way they'll find a way to become legal again. Helen is being chose as a Glastic Girl to work undercover to, to stop a mysterious villain known as Screen slaver is going around hypnotizing people by actually looking on the screen. He actually has those goggles on that that can hypnotize everybody. So she was there to to save everyone. But meanwhile, Winston offers uh, you know, Bob, you know, Mr. Incredible himself, to stay at a new home where Bob has to take care of Jack-Jack, the baby, yeah, only to find out that yes, he does have superhero powers, but he didn't know about that. And he also has to deal with Violet's uh, problems with her boyfriend named Tony, who um, unfortunately has his, has his memory erased by uh, Rick Deckard. So that, so at all this time, he doesn't even know who she is. So that's what led to this. And of course, um, Bob had to help uh, Dash um, complete his uh, math. Had to solve all the problems, so he's going to get ready for a math test coming up. So things were very tough for, for Bob, because he hardly ever sleeps. And he's trying to... Uh, to keep Jack Jack asleep, but Jack Jack just couldn't sleep at all. I mean, he just keeps getting woken up, and it's like turning on the TV to the Outer Limits and all his other shows. Yeah. On top of that, uh, he begins to fight with uh, a raccoon outside, <laughs> I'm eating all the the garbage, and this is where he. <laughs> 
he divides himself and, and just he also disguises himself as a monster and all that <laughs> trying to defeat the, the raccoon yeah I mean life was pretty hard for Bob not to mention he, he begins to spot uh, his incredible car on TV that was been taken by someone else like a rich guy so since Bob just couldn't handle uh, taking care of Jack Jack he decided to give it to Edna Mode, you know, the fashion designer from the first movie, to take care of him. And I <laughs> know that's what we lead to that, because Jack Jack suddenly disguises as Edna Mode, and he thought, "What the hell?" <laughs> so that that was working out. So now Bob gets plenty of sleep for 17 hours. Yeah. So. That's where we lead to what's going on with uh, Alaska Girl because apparently she's become so popular that it causes Bob to feel very jealous because, you know, since he had to stay home all day instead of fighting crime. But then that's what leads to um, the secret behind all this is when Alaska Girl had to stop Screen Slaver continue to hypnotize everyone so she gets to do all the action she she gets to stop them but then that's what leads to the big twist which I'm going to stop right there I'm, I don't want to mention it because <laughs> that's what leads to what's happening well anyway um, as for the sequel though I really did enjoy the film uh, in fact, it's even better than ever. I love the way things turn out. Uh, my my only issue I have with the film, though, was that it did have that cliche. I mean, we don't get to see the underminer very much, as we expected, because I thought this was going to be the true villain that they were going to have, but it just seemed like he's only there for the first act. So that was disappointing, but either way. Um, and on top of that, that cliche with um, the whole, you know, no one wants to deal with superheroes anymore, so everything has to be illegal. And that just didn't need to be there, but of course they had to go for that particular story. So Elastigirl had to go around doing all the job to, to make them legal again. So that's the case. But it was still a fun movie. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was great to see uh, the cast again. There's some new characters that they joined in too. Like for example, uh, they got uh, Void along with Crush Hauer and Electrix. Uh, the Reflux. And all of that come to mind. So there, there are some new superheroes joining in. Uh, and they, they also had um, a great story to tell, so it, really, so it wasn't disappointing at all when I mean, you think about it. Because now we begin to see what secret mission, what they had to do next. So. Um, but it was hilarious nevertheless. I mean, I, I just love the moments, you know, when, <laughs> you know, with Violet and, and Dash as well as Jack-Jack. I mean, there's even another moment when when the Incredibles uh, car had finally arrived and they're trying to save the parents. Uh, I know that's another dead giveaway too, but that's okay. Uh, but they tried to control <laughs> everything, so Dash just begins to say everything that it controls. <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> um, of course, I also love the moments, you know, where they just, <laughs> they're just playing around. Because, you know, Dash always runs as fast, and um, Violet always does those force fields. Um, and I know those even moments where, where Bob is trying to help uh, Tony out, and you know, yeah, Violet's a love interest. And <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't work out very well. <laughs> And of course, always the moments with um, 
with the family along with for Frozone because every time you see Frozone and he always brings in the suit, I mean he always hears his wife uh, saying something. <laughs> Anyway, they, they have all these incredible powers, you know. Yeah, Mr. Incredible can fight hard. Elastic Girl can really stretch uh, really fast. Uh, uh, of course, um, your yeah, Frozen Zone can actually uh, freeze. It can go around freezing everyone and start creating all these icicles, you know, just to move around, around and around. Everything. Just got amazing powers. <laughs> Definitely the best uh, Pixar film I've seen so far, along with all the other Pixar films I've seen already. So. And I'm glad to see it's it's doing so well at the box office. It's becoming the highest grossing film this year, behind all these other movies. So. And it did have a wonderful score by Michael Giacchino. It really works so well because it does have the, the feel of of other superhero movies out there. And it definitely has a a sixties feel to it. I mean the just like the first movie, I mean it definitely has a sixties feel to it. You could tell because, you know, because of the technology that they had. So it was perfect. So, highly recommend the movie. Definitely watch this uh, on the big screen by any chance. So anyway, that's The Incredibles 2, and I give it 5 stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.